Morning, everyone. What a venue. We had so much interest last year, we had to supersize it. So super excited to see so many people here. I'm Brett Tejpal, head of institutional at Coinbase, and I'm super excited to be your host today. What makes this summit, I think, unique to relative to most is that we have really the top founders and, and CEOs, and it runs the course from traditional asset management to tech companies, to crypto protocols, to regulators, to builders of all types. So welcome, excited, excited to host you today. As we gather here at this pivotal moment, I think it's worth taking a few minutes to reflect on what's happened since our summit a year ago. Spot Bitcoin ETFs are now approved, marking the most su successful launch in history. The total crypto market cap now stands strong at 2.6 trillion, more than double the size a year ago. Key players that are driving this growth are major institutions. It's BlackRock, Franklin, T. Rowe, Texas Teachers, Bitwise, Ernst & Young, Google, PayPal, all of whom have not only embraced digital assets, but who have collectively signaled a powerful vote of confidence in the future of crypto. We're going to hear from many of them today as they discuss their commitments to realizing the potential of crypto. I'd encourage you to listen closely to what they have to say because there's going to be more than one announcement that you don't want to miss. Of course, we've been building here at Team Coinbase as well. We've been investing our time and energy into launching products that institutions need. Specifically, we're focused on building our volumes on our derivative exchanges. So in addition to our US spot exchange, we have a CFTC regulated futures exchange. And about a year ago, we launched an international exchange, which principally trades perpetual futures. We're also scaling our financing products for our prime platform. And of course, we remain hyper-focused on our crypto first capabilities with products such as our Web3 wallet, which enables institutions to go on chain. Innovation is in our DNA, and I think our clients realize this. Impressively, a third of the top 100 hedge funds in the world have onboarded and activated with us. Globally, regulatory process has made significant, uh, significant advancements in the past year. The Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation in Europe, or called MICA, was finally approved. This provides a clear framework for the industry. Meanwhile, in major financial centers like the UAE and Singapore, they are actively writing rules to accommodate digital assets, creating conducive environments for innovation and growth. There's also been some progress in the US. It was really great to see the bipartisan support in the House for FIT21. That was a major accomplishment. But while it was an encouraging sign that lawmakers on both sides of the aisle recognize the importance of this asset class. It still feels like, to me, the rest of the world is running harder and faster to find commercially sensible ways to adopt crypto, leaving the US behind to play catch up. Our chief policy officer, Fire, is here along with Congressman Wiley Nickel, and they're going to discuss the evolution of crypto as a political issue on Capitol Hill. Maybe, if we're lucky, they'll tell us also what to expect in November. But this is just a reminder that even as we take stock of our achievements, it's clear that our work still isn't done. Over the past four years at Coinbase, I've been very fortunate to have had long-term commitments from, from many institutions. And maybe those commitments have sped up or slowed down at different points, but the important point is they never stopped. The institutions here today have collectively decided to embrace this technology because they're convinced of its potential. If they weren't, what would inspire them to move into this into this space after watching crypto firms become insolvent, experiencing market turbulence, and of course, living through a period of regulatory uncertainty. Their actions precisely demonstrate that crypto is a firmly established alternative asset class with staying power. Now, many people, I think, erroneously attribute this moment we're having uh, to the launch of spot Bitcoin ETFs. I don't want to downplay the significance of ETFs because it, it it has indeed been a watershed moment for the industry. The relevance is massive. I just think people have slightly misunderstood why the, why the ETFs have been so important. Since January, these products have unlocked significant demand amongst investment managers and even public pension funds like the state of Wisconsin. But this isn't just about the numbers. Truth be told, I'd be happy to cite the stats all day. 
15.4 billion of net inflows in just six months, 60 billion in AUM in total. These are huge numbers, and they're definitely worth applauding. But focusing on the numbers alone doesn't tell you the whole story about why this moment is so important, because it's about more than just the resurgence of a bull market. It's about more than just the recovery of all-time highs. Think about it. The bulk of the RAA community now has the opportunity to recommend these products to their clients. Collectively, there are about 15,000 RAAs in the U.S., and together those financial firms manage 100, 114 trillion of assets in the U.S. alone. These firms not only need to think through suitability of their recommendations to their clients, but they're responsible for carrying out massive education campaigns. I feel like it's no longer just Coinbase's advocacy alone, but we have the collective ad advocacy of the entire financial community. Step by step, these firms are actually adding Bitcoin to traditional portfolio allocations. Many of you are probably aware that there's a massive transfer of wealth that's currently taking place. In the U.S. alone, more than 70 trillion is moving from older generations to younger investors. 93% of those young people are disillusioned with the current financial system. More than half say they never or only sometimes use places like banks. They want an alternative. So this is what the birth of a new asset class looks like, echoing what I experienced during the formation of emerging markets and commodities in the past. For me, this goes back to the tenets of modern portfolio theory emphasizing the importance of risk-adjusted returns and diversification. As financial advisors delve into the data, it's become unmistakably clear that the integration of Bitcoin into portfolios, whether institutional or retail, yields tangible benefits. And what's even more incredible is that that same group of large asset managers that partnered with us on the ETFs are coming on-chain to launch new financial products like tokenized money market funds. We've seen discussions around tokenization before, and while there have been skeptics, we've seen that skepticism often accompanies transformative change. If we ask the skeptics which market would be the last to be disrupted by crypto and tokenization, I bet you they would point to the largest and most liquid market in the world, cash and T-bills. Yet even here, we're seeing groundbreaking developments. In case you didn't notice, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, just tokenized the money market fund. That fund pays both yield and allows for 24-7 transfers on chain. In today's session, we'll delve into how the largest tech firms and financial inst institutions are at the forefront of driving the adoption of cryptocurrencies. Their actions are proof that the advancements in this domain are not merely speculative. There's tangible and substantive utility. In fact, one of, one of the most promising emerging case, use cases is the payment infrastructure being built with stable coins. As we speak, leading tech giants are constructing large, robust payment systems using stable coin and crypto rails, a significant non-investment application. What, it, what does it do? It facilitates remittance payments, it enables 24-7 instant settlement, and it streamlines cross-border transactions. Here's a stat I want you to remember. The stablecoin market is now settling more than 10 trillion annually, rivaling the scale of the largest incumbent payment networks. Meanwhile, there's sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, endowments. They're all actively embracing cryptocurrency. Institutions, both domestic and international, are mobilizing and preparing for crypto disrupting the established financial services sector. If you're still not convinced, if there are any lingering doubts about the resilience of this asset class, I have to ask, well, what else does it take? What else are you waiting for? We've navigated through crypto firm insolvencies, regulatory challenges, market volatility. I mean, honestly, if the past 18 months, year to 18 months didn't kill this industry, it's never going to die. Um, the institutions today, present today, are not just participants, but pioneers, driving the future of finance. Together, we're shaping an industry that is here to stay, powered by innovation and the relentless pursuit of progress.